Just after four o'clock, Kimba on the reach with you on a Wednesday afternoon. Not a bad day outside, currently 21.4 degrees. We're here thanks to our good friends at Hyundai. The Hyundai SUV sale event is on now. Great vehicles. All right, our next guest started footy with Goody Saints Roots. He then went to West Adelaide, was recruited by the Port Adelaide Footy Club, played one game. You blokes got rid of him. Essendon saw something in him. He played 64 games and strangely was delisted last year. Ashley? Even more strangely. Ashley? I thought it was a little mm. harsh. Even more strange. He's not going back to West Adelaide. He's going to play for Sturt. And this is not unusual at the moment, well, is do, it? Do you want to find out I why? I want to know why, yes. Well, hello, William. Will Snelling. G'day, guys. Thanks for having me on. Well, all right, we've got a bit to get through, Will. Yes. Firstly, it uh, happened when we were on leave, I think. Commiserations. Um, were you surprised to be delisted by the Bombers? Yeah, and thanks for the kind words. Um, it was it was a little bit surprising. Um, I guess towards the back end of the season, when you're, you're getting towards the pointy end and you don't have a contract, it was a little bit. Uh, mm. I guess you're a little bit of concern mm. there. And then I headed off for a bit of a trip overseas, which was uh, nice. And honestly, I think the yeah, I think the, the merry-go-round sort of started, and you know the club said we'll get through trade period, and then as they do these days, and then. Probably waited until the draft as well, again mm. to just kind of know where they where they sat in that sense, and then um, I guess after they weighed all up with their their ins and outs, they probably thought that I might be a bit surplus to need. So mm. um, a little bit surprising, but at the same token, um, you know, not, not having a contract in the last few weeks always makes you a little bit on edge. Yep. Yeah, but f- that. fifteen games last year. Uh, how does the process work? Do you get a call from Brad Scott? How does it work? Uh, yeah, I had a, bit, a couple of chats. With um with Brad and Adrian Dodora, the list manager. So um, mostly through management though. So like okay. I said, I was, I was overseas, so I wasn't too too keen to chat to the coach when I'm overseas. I was trying to just enjoy my breaks. So, um, mostly through management. So what came up in the exit meeting? What sort? Of, it's interesting because you walk mm. in there, you haven't got a contract, so you already know mm, this is interesting. So what was the feedback at the exit meeting straight after the season ends? Um, yeah, it was fairly. You're asking a fair bit. It's a few months ago, but um, <laughs> probably more Left so just impression. around um, they ask how you saw your year and they try and gather yeah. a bit of data in that sense. And I would say that, you know, like I, said, I think most clubs these days try and keep their cards close to their chest mm. and they try and probably hang on to blokes to the to the trade period now because, yeah. you know, they never know with all the movement that's happening and, you know, mid-season pickups, I think lists are always sort of shifting. So... Mm. They probably gave me an indication that I'd probably be okay. Um, mm-hmm. And then even said, spoke about, you know, potentially maybe in the rookie or um, maybe even a, a supplementary pick up in the preseason. But um, I was probably a little bit um, unwilling to probably go through that process. I think being a bit older, going on 26 um, in the sense of football, I should say a bit older. But um, I think being on the, the other end of it, I probably didn't want to put myself through a, a preseason of, uncertainty and yeah. I think they kind of you know I thought maybe having that this followed up someone a bit younger and you know you know when you're 20 and you're, you're keen for anything but I think at this point I was I was pretty comfortable where I was at with my footy and in a sense I think you know when you're on the receiving end of it a lot of the year you're pretty um you yeah. know you're ready to move on in some yeah. aspects too gotcha. any other interest was there any other sniffs uh no nah, nothing yet so still waiting by the phone <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, no other AFL interest, but uh, no, there was uh, a few clubs from all over, actually. North Hobart and yeah. oh, good. area. <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, back to Adelaide it was for me. All right, so well, the big question is, uh, Reach is bemused by this. Why well, not West Adelaide? You're not, you're not the first one to do this, and we're hmm. seeing it a lot now, whereby players leave Sandfield Club, go to the AFL, but on the return, they find somewhere else to be. And, and you're a premiership player at Westies, so we shouldn't assume you were going to go straight back to West Adelaide, but why did you change? Yeah, oh, to be honest, looking back, it um, I was a bit surprised too. I I probably came back fully um, in the mindset of going back to Westies, mm-hmm. and it was probably only after I met with Sturt and you know had a look at the facilities, then all the sort of uh, the coaches and and management. I was really impressed with how they went about it, and mm-hmm. you know they've been a class act for the last we probably in all my time in the Sandful from 2015 onwards. They've always been in the top few every year, and um, I guess I got a bit of a glimpse into why that is, and probably tossing that up with um, where, where my sort of priorities will be going forward with university study. I probably felt that they were a bit better fit. And like you say, it's not, not totally uncommon these days, I reckon. No, I think no. 
it's probably where you see yourself fitting with your lifestyle and, and whatnot. And, you know, Sturt have definitely been accommodating in that sense too. In regards to your studies, are you saying that Sturt's more educated than West Adelaide? Are you saying your old mob a bit no, that, no, you're misreading that. <laughs> that is a I terrible put misread. My mouth there, I? <laughs> oh. uh, no, certainly not. I'll make that abundantly clear. Certainly not. But, uh, no, they were very, uh, oh, hello. very Adam, Adam Hartlett's ringing now. Sense. Adam Hartlett is ringing. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, is it also a fact that it's it's virtually was it nine years since you were at Westies? So so much changes in the sample that the West Adelaide you left isn't the West Adelaide you have today. Is that another factor? Yeah, and I, I def, yeah definitely. And I think I did have a, a, a short stint there after twenty eighteen. Yeah. I finished with Port before I was mid season after about six seven weeks mm. and. Um, like you say, I think a lot of the personnel changed. Probably a lot of the guys I was closer with had moved on um, or, or changed clubs. So, and it, you know, growing up in the eastern suburbs and going to Mercedes, I think I actually had a lot more um, social connection with the, the Sturt playing group. Funnily enough, I get you, so yeah, yeah. Um, that was definitely a major consideration. The, the sort of social aspect, and you know, I think Westies are definitely on the rise. And everything I've heard from other clubs and other people is there. They're definitely getting closer, but probably on the, the younger end of the spectrum, whereas I'd say, you know, Sturt probably have a lot more guys in my sort of demographic of 25 plus. Now tell us, from the inside at Essendon, when you're at those list management meetings with the infamous Adrian Dodoro. <laughs> the human hairdo. Is the myth a reality <laughs> inside your meetings as it is when we see him publicly? Uh can confirm, yeah. Ooh. Very, uh... <laughs> He's a different egg. Hey, he, we were... he skulks around the corners of the club and you don't, you don't see much of him. <laughs> uh, we were talking about you prior to the show getting underway, Will. Uh, it was all good, but we've had you on the show on numerous occasions over the journey, and I don't want this to sound patronising at all, but 65 games, um, I know you're disappointed you've been delisted, but can you walk away happy with that? It, it's a, an achievement a lot of people would take. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I sort of pinched myself knowing how hard it was to get even one game. Mm. I think a three years at Port for one game and then, yeah, to go and have a, you know, what I call a successful career uh, in that sense was really, yeah, really proud of that. And just knowing how hard, I think as well, knowing the luck as well. Well, you know, it's the right timing, it's the right coach, it's the right playing group and, you know, a lot of things go into it. And yeah, like I said, there's probably never a, a time and knowing, speaking to older guys who have finished, there's probably never a good time to finish. I think a lot of guys want to just keep going forever. And um, I guess to finish at a time now where I can move on to something, you know, arguably bigger and better in, in work and, and education, um, it's, a, it's a good way to be, to be honest. All right. You've got plenty of footy left uh, at Sturt, who are going to be up and about this year. But 65 AFL games, give us your best moment in the, in the AFL. Oh, it's probably hard to go past uh, Anzac Day. Of course. Um, and yeah, I keep the late snag in the in the last quarter, and we went on to win that one. I think mm. one of probably, I think I played in three, but one was under COVID rules, so there was no one there. So okay. probably the one with a hundred thousand was pretty, was and pretty we, special. So, well, yeah. well, just explain that a hundred thousand people. I've been at the stadium, but to be on the ground, a lot of people have been in the crowd, and it's really special. The stands vibrate and bounce around. But what's it like actually being on the oval when there's a hundred thousand people going crazy? Yeah, it's sort of strange. Like, I, I, having been to been to a game myself as a spectator, um, actually the year I got picked up in 2019, uh, feeling in the crowds probably, it almost feels a little bit elevated in some sense because when you're playing, you're just trying to almost shut it out and you're just there to kind of do your job on the field. But, yeah, there's nothing quite like that after the, the national anthem and the siren sounds and the crowd goes, goes nuts. I think that's probably one of the bigger moments that uh, yeah, you kind of pinch yourself looking back on it now. Well, Will, it's good to have you back here in South Australia. It's certainly Sturt's gain. We'll talk to you again before the season gets underway about some of the new players that have come into the Sturt Footy Club and what it'll be like playing under Marty Matner. We really appreciate your time. We're sorry it didn't uh, work out at Essendon a little bit longer, but 65 games, it's, uh, it's been a wonderful career and I'm sure there's plenty of highs left. Thanks, lads. Thanks for that. Thanks for the chat. No problems at all. He's a good fella. Sounds William, like he's got it worked out. William Alexander Snelling. It's a very regal name, isn't it? I think it's more than Sturt's gain there, Kim. I think that's the league's gain. A time when we had that text message the other day about all the exits from the mm. Well, that happens every year. But you get a Will Snelling back in your competition, it makes it better. Well, that was very deep, Roach. Mm. Beauty, beautifully phrased, too. We're here thanks to Hyundai. The Hyundai SUV sale event is on now.